will take. Uh, you have a course of inclusion, uh, a course that involves everybody with a shared sense of sacrifice, a shared uh, destiny, if you will. Uh, President Obama has laid out a, a very clear path for this country in, in which everyone works together, everyone rises together. Um, there is shared sacrifice by all, uh, but ultimately we are all in this together. Um, Governor Romney has chosen a different path. He's chosen a path that would divide us uh, based on economics. Uh, it would divide us based on have versus have not. Um, you know, to me, uh, when I look at the seal of this great country, the, the words that are written there are e plur pluribus unum, um, out of many one. I think Governor Romney's view of that is um, out of the many uh, will support some. And that, to me, is not the America that I want my kids to grow up in. So this debate uh, coming up tomorrow night is going to be awfully important. We hope uh, that it's a civil debate. Uh, we are confident that the president's going to lay out his agenda, just as he has for the last nine months. Uh, we are hopeful that uh, Governor Romney will lay out his agenda. And, and the challenge for me has been, I really don't know what his agenda is. Um, when he talks about tax cuts, and I will tell you candidly, that I probably would be the beneficiary of, of uh, those tax cuts. Um, but I don't know what they are, uh, because he or, uh, or uh, Representative Ryan have not been able to articulate exactly what it is uh, that they're going to cut and what tax breaks they are giving. Are they going to eliminate the uh, home interest or the mortgage deduction? Are they going to eliminate other things that affect middle class Americans? They can't say. All they can say is that the upper tier, uh, the upper crust of America is going to benefit. And to me, that's not what this is all about. That's not why I chose to serve. Uh, that's not what I think America is made of. America is made of, of shared sacrifice and shared opportunity and everyone pulling at that rope together. So we're looking forward to the debate. Uh, we're, hopefully it's, it, we're hopeful that it's not a debate based on uh, who launches the most number of zingers, uh, but that who engages the American people in a discussion about our future and does so in a very substantive way. Um, we think uh, that uh, the president has laid out that plan. We, he's going to continue to do it. Obviously, the stakes are very high for Governor Romney. Uh, Governor Christie the other day said that he uh, basically will take the debate hands down and it will be an entirely different ballgame. And, and, you know, Governor Romney is a great debater. Uh, he's had 20 debates over the course of this campaign. He obviously dismantled all of his opponents uh, very handily. And so, you know, we anticipate that he will be a very, very worthy adversary. Um, and, and for the president, he's going to go out there and lay out his case, as he has, um, and ask the American people to, to believe that times are better, uh, that things are better, that this was not a situation of his making, and this is not a situation that can be cured overnight, uh, but that as a result of the policies that he has put in place, uh, that America is a better place. And so we're excited. Uh, we're looking forward to it. Uh, and I think the American people are as well. So with that, let me introduce uh, a very, very dear friend of mine, uh, State Representative Janet Cruz, who represents, uh, I would venture to say, uh, Representative, a lot of the 47% that Governor Romney talked yeah. about. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Firemen, policemen, folks who get up every day and work hard to put food on the table and do the right thing, who don't want to be excluded from the prosperity that we know is America and, and who want to do their part um, and have been doing their part. Um, and. and you, uh, you ably represent them. So, Thank you. Representative Thank you. Cruz. Thank you, Mayor. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Janet Cruz, Mayor just told you. Thank you for uh, joining us, and I want to stand with the Mayor and sincerely hoping that voters hear the specific plans of both the President and his challenger, because I believe that the choice is clear for the middle class, for seniors, for students, for women, and for all Americans. The second piece of tomorrow's debate is going to be examining each candidate's record, not just on promises made, but promises kept. This is where the political rhetoric is stripped down because the facts are in writing. Mitt Romney's record for the middle class families is abysmal. As a corporate buyout specialist, Romney's job was to make money for investors, often at the devastation of middle class families and entire communities. And as a one-term governor, Mitt Romney sunk his state to 47th in job creation and created or raised more than a thousand taxes and fees, leaving behind a one billion dollar deficit. The facts Mitt Romney brushes under the rug are not minor. 
They include raising fees on basic necessities, just like si simple necessities like milk, driver's license, hospitals, nursing, barber license, and even those services for the blind. Romney's cuts to Massachusetts communities also took police officers off the streets. Fewer cops meant fewer arrests and more criminals who were never caught. For example, after Romney's cuts, the number of reported rapes stayed the same, but the rape arrests went down by 600. Massachusetts cities were less safe and less clean, and classrooms were more crowded. Those are the hits to Tampa Bay that we just simply cannot afford. Neither of the vetoes Romney made to the millions of dollars for fire safety, neither are the vetoes that Romney made to the millions of dollars for fire safety equipment. He specifically targeted the equipment in Massachusetts with a line item veto. First on the list was turnout gear. The coats, the pants, the helmets, and the boots that firefighters wear to protect themselves when they run into a burning building. Next on the list were handheld lights that help firefighters see through the smoke and the devices that help them communicate with other firefighters. The funding would also the, the funding also would have gone toward technology firefighters use to find people in a fire and to track their fellow firefighters to make sure that they make it out okay. Even personal alert safety systems, air packs, tanks, compressors were on, were on Romney's chopping block. That's the equipment that literally keeps firefighters alive and breathing while they're surrounded by flames. The failures of Mitt Romney's governorship affected real people and his reckless real repeat policies that we've already tried. This would hit Americans across the country. We need Americans to know the truth. With that, I would like to introduce Allison McDaniels and Jacqueline Malcolm. Thank you, Representative Cruz. Good afternoon. My name is Jacqueline Malcolm, and I am a retired educator. I taught school for 20 years, 17 as a math teacher and three as a high school counselor. I am also a Medicare recipient, so I do understand intimately how the President's support for Americans, their education, and their health has real consequences. Building a skilled workforce is critical to creating a healthier economy and one that is competitive for the jobs of the future. But too many kids are being priced out of colleges or forced to graduate with too much debt, and up to a quarter of our students aren't even finishing high school. When the president took office, he had fallen from first to twelfth in the world in college graduates. We had a prescription for economic decline. President Obama, who knows what it's like to take out and pay back student loans, is helping students achieve and compete by spurring reform across the country, by pre preventing hundreds of thousands of teacher layoffs, and helping millions of students pay for colleges and repay their loans. The President is offering states relief for no child left behind if they'll use local so solutions to raise standards, recruit and train great teachers, and use local solutions to improve struggling schools. A world-class education is the single most important factor in determining not just whether our children can compete for the best jobs, but whether America can outcompete countries around the world. While Mick Romney is committed to cutting funding for education and cutting back assistance to our students, President Obama is working to put an outstanding education within the reach for every American. This ele election also impacts me because I am a, re a me Medicare recipient, excuse me, and Mick Romney's plan to turn Medicare into a voucher system would devastate seniors all across the country. I recently had knee surgery and relied on Medicare both for my surgery and for my rehab, without which I would have a different quality of life. The President's commitment to all Americans is basic. He understands the struggles for everyday Americans and is ready to fight for the well-being of us all. Thank you.